so fun to share with you. And I wanna just give a minute for a couple more people to get in before I dive totally in. Um, yeah, so I'll chat and say hello. Maybe let me know where you're tuning in from or if you've caught a live before. Um, those of you who have been following me for a long time know that I tend to do these impromptu, very short notice lives when I've just got something loaded on the long arm frame that I think will be of interest to those of you who are also quilters. And I just talk honestly about, you know, either challenges or discoveries or whatever the case may be. So Kathy in Utica, Michigan, Connie, Catherine, excited first time on, awesome. So nice to see you. Let me know how the sound is. I realize I probably should have worn my mic, but I'll just stay close to the camera. Okay, let's dive in. Honestly, you guys, I'm counting on you <laughs> to be my accountability buddies. The project that I have loaded is a quilted coat. Um, I didn't bring the pattern with me, but I'll try and do that tomorrow because I'm gonna do a couple of these sessions in quick succession. But basically it's a coat for me and it's a swing coat. So it's kind of an A line and it's about hem length, like dress length would be, and it has a hood. Um, so this coat is of course quilted because what else would I make in a coat, right? Um, oh, lots of you are chiming in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll come back and read the comments. Sound is fine. Anne is saying, good, I'm happy to hear that. Great, as long as I stay pretty close to my phone, it works well. When I want to walk away, I have learned that I need to wear a microphone. Okay. Back to the coat. Swing coat. So my idea, big picture, is I'm quilting the fabric. So I've got this gray kind of tweedy fabric, which is going to be the outside of the coat. And on the bottom, I've got a lightweight muslin that I found in, in a 108 inch width of fabric. So it's just one piece. And I've got a layer of batting in between. So I'm quilting all the layers. When that is done, then I'll take that as though it was my fabric and I'll cut out the coat and then the whole coat has this gorgeous red and black and pink poppy print lining. If any of you have seen my child's red coat that I made a few years back, it's the same lining. It's so, so gorgeous. Um, and I happened to find it again. So I thought I want that in my coat too. I loved it so much. Okay, some specifics. The fabric that is on the exterior of the coat is not quilting cotton. It's a it's a weighty, drapey, mostly polyester. Honestly, it's got some spandex and some viscose in it. It is machine washable. I want to be able to hand wash it at least on my own. I don't know, after I put all this work into it, I might end up dry cleaning it, but that's what it is. So it's a bit tweedy. It's a solid color, but it's a bit tweedy. It has proven to be a bit of a challenge already. It number one frays horribly. And number two is, um, slinky, like a little bit like rayon fabric used to be when, way back in the days when we sewed garments out of rayon. Like it's really hard to keep it straight. So that's proving to be a bit of a challenge, but I hope that I've, you know, stabilized it well enough. So some of the steps I've taken then are, oh, I should go back to a couple more specifics because one of them is the batting. I've had this coat planned for a number of months and I thought that I had everything I needed for it, including I intended to put silk batting in it, which is very, very um, thin, very lightweight, and also drapey, it's very pliable. And when I went to grab that prepackaged silk batting that I thought I've had for six months or more, turned out it was a polyester batting, which yeah, yuck, I don't want that in my coat. It's stiff and crisp and yeah, no, I don't want that. So I ended up using Winline 8020, which I have on hand by the roll. Um, it's softer than some other brands of 8020, drape wise. It's just got a softer hand to it. So my choices were, do I wait and order in that silk again? I already had the backing loaded. I was already in the groove and I'll talk about that groove more in just a second. And I opted to just use the 8020. Let's talk about the groove for a minute. It's kind of a funny story. I've had this coat, as I said, in my mind, in my idea, you know, for months and had the pattern, had the fabrics, et cetera, had the wrong batting, but you know, thought I was prepared. And I've kept putting it off because I just couldn't land on what I thought was the perfect quilting design for it. Did I just wanna do something edge to edge across all the fabric, which is what I did on the little red coat that I referred to? Did I want to do something as a border around the hemline of it? Cause it does have this swingy kind of hem. Um, did I want to do something, you know, more intricate and, and maybe contemporary with areas of, like what did I want to do all over it? And I just couldn't land on the perfect thing. 
and here's the thing. I've been talking recently about doing it in the month of December. I'm doing some of my own projects and in my mind I had this coat planned and I keep putting it off and I keep putting it off. There's all these reasons. Well, yesterday I thought, you know, I'm just gonna load that coat and I'm gonna count on my YouTube friends to be my accountability buddies <laughs> and say, how's your coat coming? Just get going. Because the truth of the matter is, it is only fabric. It did cost me a little money, but not a lot. So that's all I'm investing in it, a little bit of fabric and some of my time. If it does not turn out perfect, I'll have learned something and I'll take that into the next coat. That's the best that I can do. So we're getting set up for quilting. Here's what I did. The pattern is made interestingly that the back is one piece and the sleeves are actually part of it in the pattern piece. And they, it kind of folds over and then there's a seam, like a raglan shaped seam in the front. So I was attracted to this pattern for making a quilted coat because it does not have a bunch of seam lines. You don't chop up all your quilting and then try and put it back together and make where it joins look good. The back and the sleeves are actually all one piece. The difficulty with that, of course, is that piece is huge. So I did buy 60 inch wide fabric and in addition, I actually cut two lengths of it, like as long as my coat, and sewed them side by side. So I've actually got a 118 inch wide piece of fabric. That way I was able to put my whole back in one piece and I just centered where that, um, there was a seam on the pattern piece, but also the center of the coat was marked. So I just centered that piece and mirrored it right centered on that seam line. And then I thought to myself, well, this is great because then I can put both front pieces on either side of it and I can kind of fit the hood, you know, left and right side in between there too. And then that's good. I've just got one length of quilting to do. That is in fact what I'm doing, but it is 118 inches wide and I've just got a 12 foot quilting frame. So it is so long that I literally have to lift the handlebars. Here's Stella, my quilting machine. I literally have to lift her bars out of the way when I get to the end because I bump into the rails. I can't even quilt to the end. So I am at the limits of what I can quilt on my machine. But again, it's, it's not super duper long. It's 61 inches long. So I think it's going to be manageable. What else have I done? I've done kind of my typical quilt things, which is based up one side, across the top, down the other, anchored the front with my um, magnetic bars. That's what I'm trying to say. And the quilting design that I finally decided on is that I'm going to do a border treatment that goes all the way around the hem and probably on the cuffs of the sleeves as well. I have not for sure decided that. Um, and then I'm going to fill it with an edge to edge kind of floral design because of the floral lining of the coat. I thought that that would be suitable and I know how to do floral freehand design. So that's relatively easy once the border is done. Here's my question on the sleeve hems. What I did with my huge gray piece before I even loaded it on the quilting frame, I did this on the floor so that I could see it all at once. I actually took chalk and my pattern pieces and I marked out the hemline precisely, like that curve, you know how there's a curve on the bottom of a hem? Well, it would go this way. I've got it loaded upside down on my frame. Um, I marked that curve and then I kind of gave myself a general idea where the sides or shapes of the piece are. So I'm sure to quilt enough. Although I know it's going to pull in, I will quilt generously beyond. But I wanted to get that hem shape in so that I can make the border exactly match that curve and then hopefully my hemline when I sew it will also match that curve, fingers crossed. So I did that for the giant back piece and for both of the side front pieces. So before I loaded it on the machine, I have then that outline of the hem. What I did then, and this was an idea I got from Beth Ann Nemish. I took poster board, just inexpensive foam core type poster board, and I created, this is half of my coat. This is my center line. Can you see it curves? That's the exact shape of the hem of my coat. My idea was I want to separate some of the elements of that border with, with like quarter inch spaced lines. This is not a straight ruler. This is not any curved ruler that I have. And the idea that came from Beth Ann, she's done this with foam core before and made a sort of temporary ruler that you can use with the long arm in the exact shape that you want it to be, whatever the thing is that you're doing. It's not super durable, it is only foam. And in fact, because mine is just poster board, it's actually not durable enough. I did try and quilt along the edge of it, but even with one pass, it just, it mashed that foam enough that my precision was totally gone. However, 
this shape worked beautifully for drawing the marked lines onto my fabric. So that's what I ended up doing. I've got an actual 10 inch border and it's got several elements and, and lines in between them. So I used my handy dandy foam core pieces. I had made a couple of them to draw those lines in place. And now I'm actually quilting them with a straight ruler because there's very little curve. All of my curved rulers were far, far, far too curved. The straight was the closest. I'm just shifting it as I go. And it's working pretty good, actually. Another of the challenges that I'm facing is this gray tweedy fabric. And this surprised me. I thought it's a solid, it's gonna show off the quilting and it's gonna be easy to work on and that'll be great. That's not proving to be the case. I have a, a deep charcoal thread as well. And the thread almost disappears into the fabric. So difficult to see when I'm quilting it. Honestly, not all that easy to see the quilting. You really don't see the stitches at all. You just see the shadow. So I'm investing all this work into it and I'm not 100% sure what it's gonna look like when it's done because it's not showing off the quilting like a cotton fabric does. On the plus side, you know, those quarter inch space lines when they're not exactly precisely even, or, you know, when I pause along the edge of my ruler and I get a couple short stitches and then a couple longer ones, none of that is showing either because those individual stitches don't show up. So I'm just getting started quilting this morning. I mean, you might be able to see a little bit of the quilting here, but with the lights that I turned on for filming, I know you probably can't see it well. And what I'm having to do for the quilting, even though I have super bright lights, can you see that? Those are my super bright lights that I use for my um, all my YouTube episodes. Uh, and they're great for quilting too, so they serve a double purpose. But I've turned them on so that you can see me on camera. But when I'm quilting, I'm actually turning off all the lights. So my bright filming lights, my overhead room lights, and even my quilting machine lights. And then I've got, can you see that funny little floor lamp with a, with a gooseneck behind me? I'm just shining that in from the side and I'm literally quilting by shadow because I can't, I can't see the actual stitches. So I'm going to end up quilting this entire border for sure that way. I think I get, when I get to the edge to edge quilting, um, because I know my way around that more, that might be easier with lights on. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down and read some comments and I'm sorry the phone always wobbles when I do this. Beaumont, Alberta, Hamilton, Ontario, Marie Suzanne in the UK, Oklahoma, the Quilted Poodle. So glad you're doing this. I have a quilted coat that I need to quilt. You know, it's interesting as I scroll down through these, quilted coats are all the rage right now, but most quilted coats are made from an existing quilt. And you see that being cut up and then sewed into a coat shape, which is, which is absolutely lovely. What does not appeal to me personally is that tends to be a boxy quilt because it's not very shaped. And this one is not gonna be super shaped either. It's not princess lined or anything like that, but it does have the shoulder shape and then it's, it's, got, a, it's got a flare to the hem. So we'll see how it turns out, you guys. We'll just see. Linda in Kansas, Nadia in Switzerland. Awesome, Margaret in Las Vegas. Love your videos, awesome. Well, I don't see a lot of you chiming in with tips for me. <laughs> I'm on my own. But you know, please do be my accountability partners here if you're willing. So I'll try and pop onto YouTube probably once a day over the next couple of days. And I'll even aim to make it about the same time, which is 10 o'clock Pacific time for me is when I came on today. Um, so that you can catch hopefully a couple of the episodes. And I would love to hear your feedback on what you think I'm doing. And tomorrow I'll try and post a photograph of the quilting as the thumbnail so you can kind of see what that's shaping up to be like. So let's see if there are any more questions. That's all I see. Well, thanks you all for joining me and I appreciate you um, just being present for some of my quilting and some of my struggles. And, you know, in my studio and on my YouTube channel in general, um, this is kind of what I do. I show behind the scenes stuff and I'm pretty honest. You know, when I have thread breaks or when things aren't working or when whatever happens. I'm pretty honest about that sort of stuff. So welcome to my, welcome to the real world of the Stitched by Susan studio. Anyway, thanks for joining me today and I will catch up with you again tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day.